So in addition to the progression holes, there's one other video that I thought would make sense to point out while the car carburetors weren't actually on the bike because you could see the pieces much easier. And that is actually uh, what you're going to be connecting to and why you're doing some of the things that you're doing when you're synchronizing the carburetors. And so what you're doing when you're synchronizing the carburetors is making sure that all of the butterflies are opening equally and at the exact same time. And what you're doing is you're testing the vacuum pulled by the carburetors to make sure that they're all the same. And let's, uh, let's look at this here. So on here, there's these three synchronization screws. Okay, and then each one of the carburetors has a vacuum port that's covered by one of these plugs. Okay, so these are what we're going to connect to. These little, uh, I don't know, vacuum bulbs or something? Vacuum... A place where you could stick a hose. So if your carburetor doesn't have one of these spots where you can stick the hose, it usually has something you can screw out and put in one of these extensions. So this is where you would attach the hose. But I don't need to on this bike because it has all these little bulbs. So uh, what we'll end up doing is using this carburetor sinking tool. And it's a pretty slick little thing. It's got four vacuum gauges on it. So this is measuring in uh, tor, I assume, millimeters of mercury, millimeters of water, something like that. It actually doesn't matter what the uh, what the pressure is that we're reading. What we're trying to see is that all of them are reading the same. We just want to know that all of them are pulling the vacuum at the same time. One other thing I just forgot to mention is that these little screws here, one, two, and three, by adjusting the screw, what we do is adjust the balance between these two. So when you're sinking two carburetors, it's very simple. You just have to do the one screw and synchronize the two carburetors to make sure they're opening in tandem. But when you have four, it becomes a little more tricky. When you have six, like on a really cool uh, Honda CBX, well, then it becomes, then it becomes a, a day or a week's worth. But on this, it's actually fairly straightforward. What you do is balance them in tandem. One and two, get these two working at the same time. Get them reading the same pressure. Then you balance the other half. Once you've got this pair and this pair working in tandem, then balance the one that balances the two pairs. And then you've got four carburetors that are synchronized. So that brings me back to this. Now, one of the things I've been reading is, uh, and that I'd never done before, was checking whether or not this thing's actually calibrated. And the way I was told you could check to see that it's calibrated is while the engine's running, and it needs to be a warm engine, is to uh, take the hose off of this. So you, under here, you're going to have some hoses. So you'll connect the hose from here and send it to your port right there, okay? And then if it's, I don't know, if it's reading 400 millimeters of vacuum, check that it reads 400 millimeters of vacuum on each one. And if it doesn't, then you can take the sight glass off and you can adjust the little screw and calibrate them that way. I was wondering if there was a more simple way. And then I was wondering how do I set up a consistent vacuum? And this may not be the most scientific way, but uh, it seems to be pretty good to me. So I'm gonna show you something, nice, Matt. Something I've tried that seems to indicate that these things were calibrated correctly by the factory. And this says that they were calibrated by the factory, but it gives uh, some instructions on what to do about gauge calibration if they weren't. Some of the things I was reading online is that these things are never calibrated by the fact that they can be all over, blah, 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 blah. I have a Mighty Vac brake bleeder. And I know that if I do foo, ah, foo, two full, uh, you know, depressions on this lever that I've moved this piston twice. I should have the exact same vacuum pull on each of these. So I figured, let's just, let's just try it. So, let's just try it. Come on. Okay. So, I needed to use a, a barb to go from this bigger line to the smaller line. 
And uh, what I'm going to do is one, two. On my Mighty Vac, I'm reading about uh, 12 inches of mercury. HG, that's mercury, right? And then here, that's where I'm at. So 10 to 15, that's like 13. All right. Let the pressure out. I should see pretty damn close on the rest of them. That's my theory on this relativity, at least. So, what I'm finding is that when I do that, one, what the heck? Oh, I was sorry. All right. I was holding that closed. All right. One, two. Take a look at that. Just about the exact same reading of 13. So, just for posterity, try another one. And one, two. Same to me. So, I don't, for, for balancing the carburetors, I don't care exactly which reading they're bringing me whether or not it's 20, 20 inches of pole or not, I care that they're reading the same when the bike is running. So uh, this is my makeshift way of checking that the, uh, the gauges are in sync. And to me, this makes sense, and they are. All right, so I've got the, uh, the auxiliary tank hooked up, and I've got that fuel filter that uh, it looks like it's gonna fit just fine underneath the seat, so I'll be able to put the gas tank on it. The last time that I idled this, uh, it seemed like the bowls weren't getting enough fuel, which makes sense because I had them set, set way too out of spec. And uh, I just, I wanted to start this tonight. It's a little late, so I'm not gonna do it too long, but I wanted to start it and uh, just see if it will even run with me setting the air fuel mixture screws to one and seven eighths versus the three and a half that they are at. That's the change that I made on the carburetor. And just a little side note, it was like 50 degrees today in the middle of January, which is awesome. So I took this little KE 100 out. I have never gotten more people coming up and talking to me about a motorcycle than since I got this little guy. He's uh, it's hysterical. So let's try this out. Let's see if, uh... oh, I should have flooded the bowls earlier. I'm gonna drop some fuel in and should see this go for a little while. The carburetor is, it's empty. So right now we're filling up the bowls. Each of the bowls should fill up and uh, then the needles should come up and stop it. And we'll see that when that happens, when this fuel stops flowing. So what got this whole predicament started was those fuel seats never came up and sealed and uh, it just dumped the entire tank's worth into the engine, which is uh, pretty insane. So, come on. I guess I, I could talk about the KE100 for a little bit. Uh, funniest bike I've ever ridden. And uh, tops out at about 45, 50 miles an hour. Oh, air, we just hit it, see? Anyway, ring a ding 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 I love the two-stroke. All right, so let's see if we can get this started now, because the bowls have fuel in them. This is loose, so it's an open atmosphere, and I need a key if I'm ever gonna start anything. Ah, shit, I never connected the choke. This don't start without the fucking choke. Okay, choke is back on. Something I forgot to mention, I still got the pair bell disconnected. So, plugs on one, two, oh, ooh. This may explain why I wasn't idling correct. I don't know that I plugged off carburetor number four last time. We gotta do that. Okay, car four is plugged off. Now, nah. the fuck did I put the key? God damn it. 
Okay, now we're ready to go. Big difference on this between previously is the air fuel mixture screws set to one and seven eighths versus the three and a half turns out. Um, I don't have it out here but I have a uh, Yamaha FCR 600 and getting it started this car rated engine just like this responds pretty damn similarly. Something else I'm realizing that uh, why I may have been having trouble with the uh, auxiliary fuel tank earlier, I don't know that the last time that I actually set up the, uh, uh, what am I thinking, the uh, throttle position sensor, which actually activates the, the timing advance. So that may explain it because I actually haven't set it up this time. Basically, I just wanted to see that this started. It's too late at night for me to actually start revving on it and getting it fully warmed up. But uh, this is going to be a tomorrow project, but I wanted to make sure that I had it running or, and could get it running. I'm going to put the battery tender on it tonight and we'll do a full warm up tomorrow and see if it revs and everything starts to work correctly. So thanks for watching.